Hi, welcome to Warfare Mindsets. Today, I just want to share with you the need to have a heart of Thanksgiving. Today in America is Thanksgiving Day. It's a day the United States of America has set aside for Thanksgiving. And it's usually celebrated with the eating of a turkey. And I want us to remember that Thanksgiving is more than a turkey. It's more than eating turkey and uh, rice. Um, Thanksgiving is something that must be expressed outwardly towards God. It's a day where we are showing, and every day should be a day of thanksgiving. If we cannot thank the God that saved us, if we cannot thank the God that gave us his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the God that gave us salvation, the God that took our names from darkness and put our names in the book of life, we must be thankful to him. And so the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it tells us in verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So in every event or circumstance, we must learn to give thanks. Even when that circumstance is unpleasant, even when that um, circumstance is hard, God is saying, give thanks, because even from that unpleasant situation, God can work good out of it. And that was the problem with the children of God in the wilderness. They got to the wilderness, it was rather harsh and unpleasant. And instead of giving thanks, they began to complain. And their complaining stirred the anger of God towards them. People that complain don't know how to give thanks. And so they began to complain in the desert. And God does not want to raise up complainers. We have to learn to be thankful. So the Bible says in everything, good or bad, give thanks. For this is God's will concerning you. Now, when you look, excuse me, when you look at the preceding verse, preceding verses, you begin to understand the context of giving thanks. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I start with verse 16. Verse 16 says, rejoice always. Short verse, rejoice always. People that cannot rejoice will find it difficult to give thanks. People that cannot rejoice always. The Bible says rejoice always, always, always. In other words, you don't turn off your rejoicing. It's not on and off. You don't switch it off and switch it on. Rejoice always. Your rejoicing should be constant. And people that can't rejoice often fall into the snare of complaining. Things are not going your way, and so you begin to complain. What did Job say? Job says, Job said, even though he slay me, yet will I praise him, yet will I trust him. So we must learn to rejoice in him, even when, even though he slay us. So the Bible says, rejoice always. And people that rejoice always can easily give thanks. But people that don't rejoice, they feel the world is against them, everything is um, against them, and they will find it difficult to, to thank God because all they will do is complain. And if you're a complainer, that means you don't have the right warfare mindsets. You know, warriors, warriors for Christ, they thank their commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ, in the good and in the bad. War, it's called spiritual warfare. War is rough. The nature of war is rough and you've been conscripted into God's army as a soldier of Christ. So you give thanks whether it's rough, whether it's tough or whether it is pleasant. Give thanks. And the Bible says rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I read verse 17. Pray without season. Pray without season. Be in a constant attitude of prayer. People that pray will find it easy to give thanks. People that pray, even when they are in adverse circumstances, when they are in unpleasant situations, they will be able to give thanks because they've been strengthened through prayer and they begin to look at that unpleasant situation as something that will soon pass away. Because why? You are a man, you are a woman of prayer. So the Bible tells you, rejoice always, pray without season, and then it says, give thanks. Then it says, give thanks. And when we don't give thanks, 
we tend to have a sense of entitlement. People that don't give thanks tend to have a sense of entitlement. They think, oh, I'm entitled to it. It's mine. It's my right. Ah, it's my right. Nothing is your right. We don't deserve anything. You deserve nothing. All that we have is because of God's grace. It's because of God's grace. We are entitled to nothing. And look at Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Entitled to everything, but he laid down everything at the cross for the sake of you and I. If Jesus were to hold on to his privileges, his rights, and his entitlements, we would not be saved. But he cast all that aside. And when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, I believe it is Matthew, let's see if I can find it. I believe it's Matthew chapter 26. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he says in verse 42, Hallelujah. Popular verse, but I want to read it verbatim. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. So here is an unpleasant situation Jesus found himself in. And he says, Father, if this unpleasant situation cannot pass, let your will be done. And thankful people always submit to God's will. People that rebel against God's will cannot be thankful. You can't be rebellious against God and be thanking him. So those that have no problem submitting to the will of God, those that can say, even though he slay me, yet will I praise him, yet will I trust him. Those are thankful people. So no matter what, and no matter what you may be going through, learn to have a heart of thanksgiving. Let your thanksgiving exceed your request. You know, it is the will of God that you never stop giving thanks. A, a, a thankful person accepts God's will. Mm. Brothers, sisters, be thankful. His grace is sufficient for you. There's so much to thank God for. He has kept us. His mercy, His grace, His divine provision. He has made a way for us even when there was no way. It's because of His grace that we are standing. It's because of His grace. He has fought so many unseen battles for us. There are many battles God has fought on our behalf that we are not even aware of. We cannot afford not to be thankful. Now, if you remember in the Gospels, Jesus healed ten lepers. And only one came back to give thanks. And the Bible says, he, he glorified God with a loud voice. With a loud voice, he gave thanks and glory to God. Why? Thanks has to be expressed. You see, you can worship God in your heart, in your spirit. But thanksgiving to have gravitas... It's poured out. It's like an alabaster box you need to break. It's poured out. You express it. Thanks is expressed. You can worship God in your heart, but thanks is expressed. It flows. You know, a heart of thanks even flows to the lips. And so one leper came back to give Jesus thanks and glorify God. And Jesus said, we are there not ten lepers. How come only one came back? And the one that came back was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan and entitled to nothing. But the other nine probably were like, well, healing is the children's bread, so I got the healing because I'm a child of God. It's my sense of entitlement. And when you have a sense of entitlement, there is a lack of humility. I repeat, when you have this sense of entitlement or privilege, there's a lack of humility. And when there's a lack of humility, that is pride. And prideful people, proud people, are not the best of thanks, thanksgivers. They're not the best. And God resists the proud anyway and gives grace to the humble. 
So in this Thanksgiving season, cast aside that, set, that sense of entitlement. Thank the God, creator of heaven and earth, that has kept you. He is the God that keepeth Israel in neither slumber nor sleep. If God is not keeping you, you won't be here. So I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Spirit of God will stir in your heart thanksgiving, that your heart will not be given to complaining and grumbling in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for you today for the right mindsets that you will have a heart of thanksgiving in spite of circumstances in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but that by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your request known unto God, that the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of God that passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I pray for you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, that thanks and praise will generate from your heart in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of complaining. I rebuke the spirit of woe is me. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will rejoice in the Lord always. That you will pray without ceasing. And that you will not quench the spirit's fire. I pray that none of us will be given to complaining. That will grip the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. We celebrate you, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all for the gift of Jesus Christ. We thank you most of all, Jesus, that you laid your life down, that you that knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. That you that we are rich, you made yourself poor. That we, wretched ones, might become rich. Thank you, Jesus. We are so thankful. You've done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for restoration. We thank you. We thank you for the sun, for the moon, for the stars. We thank you for everything that you've given us in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. I wish you a happy Thanksgiving, especially those in the, in the United States of America. And let's remember our thanks goes to the Lord. And let us walk in humility. God bless you. My name is Idemudia Gubadia. And I encourage you to subscribe to Warfare Mindsets. You'll be getting more of these messages to strengthen you in the faith. Amen. Peace.